That is the Epic Bait Molds 3.6 inch open pour drop shot vert worm. Let's pour some. What's going on fellow bait makers? Is that not a beautiful thing? I mean, come on, right? It is the perfect blend, in my opinion, of the Strike King Dream Shot, that long slender profile, and the Strike King Half Shell, which has that T in the tail, although this one is more of a football shape down at the bottom. I have had these for a little bit because I was able to get some early in the prototyping phase. Super blessed. Thank you, Jason and Amanda, for hooking me up with those. Have since bought multiples more. I'm going to probably buy two more just to fill up my griddle because this bait is freaking fantastic and we are going to pour some up today. I have a perch-inspired pattern that I'm dying to try. I have not done it on this um, on this mold yet and I'm excited to do it with you guys. So as you can see I've got four loaded up here on the griddle. Uh, this is a large Black & Decker version. You can easily get eight on here to do four dozen at a time. Six cavity a piece. So I plan to do that. I've got actually six, two more over there, but uh, we're going to do four today. First step is we need some perchy stripes. So I've got MF Black here and a half cup of Bait Plastics 242 as usual. Normally for a kind of a smoke, I don't want a saturated black. So I'm looking for something a little bit darker than smoky shad. Usually that's about five to six drops per cup to get that look. So I wanna go just a little bit darker than that if I was making a full cup, we've only got a half here, I would do eight. So let's do four and see how that looks. I want some transparency with this, but not too much that we can't tell what's going on. Let me pull out this little uh, color tester. This is another Epic product. It's about 25 bucks, maybe, maybe different now. It's how much it was when I got it ages ago. So. Let's pour some. I kind of use the the um, knife to drizzle some on there. Do that, and we can check out how dark this is. See if we need to add one or two more drops. I actually ended up adding three more drops. So this is seven total drops in a half cup. Uh, the griddle is cold, so we're going to pour this just so it kind of stays where I want it to on the cold griddle. We'll add uh, heat and we'll add our extra colors and then at the end we'll kind of bake it all there together to make sure that they blend up. Thinking with this size body, we're going to get maybe three stripes. So let's see if we can do that. Okay, definitely not the greatest um, job there. I got too much distance between these two. It's not at all even. So let's see if we can do a little bit better job on these bottom ones. And one more. I don't want to get it back here where the tail dips down into the body. I really want that to be open. I think my spacing is once again just a little off. Yeah. There we go. Well, not my best effort. Uh, that's killing me. This one's better. I like this one probably the best. That one seemed to work out the best. This one, once again, a little too close. Those are just a hot mess. Mm -mm. I'm gonna do this over again. I'll show you what they look like in a second. All right, here's attempt number two. Quite a bit better. Still far from perfect, but definitely more even. 
I think we got the saturation right. I guess we'll know that for sure once the bait is done. I definitely found it a lot easier um, as I was pouring those to not, I would go from right to left so I could kind of see where I was going as I poured it. And then I was trying once on the left, just come down a little bit and pull back and watch it. And I'd, I wasn't doing that well. So I would just go all the way across, stop, kind of wipe off, start back over, go all the way across. I also did the first stripe up by the nose and the last stripe closest to the tail first and then just tried to cut it right down the middle uh, to even it out. We need to move on now to our body and our tail color. That's going to be uh, green pumpkin. So I got some lure works, green pumpkin 109 here. Uh, I'm gonna make some of that for a buddy anyway and he wanted green pumpkin blue. So. We're gonna put some 15 Royal Blue from Lure Works in there as well. Weird thing about Blue Flake and Green Pumpkin, it almost always turns green to the eye. This is the strongest blue that I have. I'm hoping that that will not be the case and we can actually get some blue out of it. I'm gonna also add some black 15 just for texture. So my normal Green Pumpkin is about 15 drops of this. I want it a little bit more translucent, so transparent. So we're going to go with 10 this time, see where that gets us. Yeah, I like that. So that looks pretty good. Let's add our flake. Got an eighth of a teaspoon here. Put our black 15 in. And same size, one eighth of a teaspoon with the blue. And we'll see if this can hold its color. <laughs> yeah, there's some, I see blue and then green too. See that mix? Isn't that crazy? All things considered, that did hold the blue color um, fairly well. So I'm gonna warm this guy up and I'm also going to turn on the hot plate. So I'm gonna set it to 250, start warming these molds up to improve the flow. All right, I got this at 350, which is a little warm for open pouring, especially with flake, because it, if you get too hot, the flake will settle. But this mold is so small, right? The cavities are so small, the, uh, the plastisol kind of hardens up pretty quick and there, it, that flake will be suspended, um, shouldn't be a problem. We're going to uh, pour from the tail first and into the body, and I don't want to fill up the body all the way. There we go. A little cleanup on the edges, not a big deal. CNC aluminum makes it really easy to, uh, as my buddy Nick says, pinch that off. And there we have it. So those all turned out nice. Not sweating some of this over pour stuff like that like this reminder we had to pinch these off to begin with right so I knew there was going to be clean up on here and these will clean up quite nicely after the fact so I didn't fill up the body cavity all the way and that was on purpose because what is a perch without a little bit of orange and per the new recent tradition I guess I thought this was a perfect opportunity to do our orange with uh, just flake. Got our half cup here. Let's start with a quarter teaspoon of 008 extra fine orange. And to that, we're going to add an eighth of a teaspoon of 15 orange to get some size differential. And then to that, we are going to add a half of 1 16th, so a 32nd or a smidget or a 
a pinch or a whatever of black just because I think that would look nice. Hopefully that black will kind of help pull in the stripes a little bit. I don't know. I think I might actually go a little bit more saturated with the small stuff. So let's go another leveled out quarter of the extra fine. You can still see through, right? But overall, once it stacks on top of each other, it's gonna look really nice. All right, same thing, just under 350. It's like 345-ish or so. This is going to finish our bellies. So let's pour them. Not gonna take much. And there we have it. So looking a little ugly on a couple of them, but a couple of these really turned out nice. And again, I think once we get them cleaned up, pinch off the edges, those might look pretty daggone sweet. I know I could have skin poured that green pumpkin layer and that would have given me a whole lot more room for the orange. But that would have been a bit of a challenge for the tail because I wanted the, uh, the green pumpkin to stay in the tail. And I, I really just wanted to see that green pumpkin on top of the orange. Look at how nice those cleaned up. Huh? Just take your thumb and pinch right along the edge. You can scrape it down. I have high hopes here. Let's check out our final product. And here we go. Did it work? I see some stripage. There's our orange. Oh yeah. Oh, that orange is popping through. Look at that. Pretty bait. Wow. Looky there. Oh man, let's check out some more. Mm-hmm. Beautiful. How about those right there? There's all two dozen that we made today. Check those out. Man, what a bait. Love this mold. Love pouring it. So much fun for like a lightly stained or clear water presentation. I mean, shut up, right? Holy cow, little little baby perch, little perch minnows. Jeez Louise, I wanna eat them and I'm not even a fish. Let me give you one last close up of these guys and then I'm really looking forward to seeing what these look like in the old test tank. So good, right? I mean, so good in the test tank. You can imagine what it's gonna look like on the end of your line, on the end of my line. I am beyond happy with these guys. If you drop shot, if you make your own baits, and if you open pour, even if you don't open pour, but you drop shot and you make your own baits, you gotta go 
get you one. I think they're like 80 bucks. Uh, I've got six and I'm planning on getting two more just so that I can fill up that griddle. Head over to epicbaitmolds.com and you can find it there. Add it to your bait making arsenal. Guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. I had a lot of fun making it. If you did enjoy the video and you'd like to see more lure making just like it, then click right here. If you're curious about the name SDG, then click right here. Otherwise, until the next bill, I'll see you guys in the shop.